All right, let's go to the phone right now and bring in Paul Allen. He is the radio play-by-play -play man for the Minnesota Vikings. We've been traveling around the NFL, checking in with somebody who knows a lot about each team, and Paul Allen is the guy who knows a lot about the Minnesota Vikings. Paul, welcome to the show. Hey, Mr. Page. That would be Woody. I'm Les. Uh, Mr. Page, if I had a chalkboard above my right shoulder, it would read, Delivering Purple Kool-Aid for Profit. <laughs> And Paul has, I know it's a different venue, but in the sassy vein of Woody Page, I had to say it. <laughs> yeah. And Paul has the greatest set of gray hair. And as three guys here that have gray hair, I think he has the greatest gray hair, set of gray hair I've ever seen in my life. Is that? Well, I mean, and, and being the play by play guy for this team for 14 years, it would probably take anybody and make them look like a Midwest version of Michael McDonald. <laughs> there, there. I like that because I like my, I like Michael McDonald. That's a great, great comparison. I, I came to Minneapolis. Uh, I, I hate to tell people Minneapolis that one of my best friends used to be the general manager of, of the Minnesota Vikings, and he lived on that lake, Lake Tonka. Well, there are ten thousand of them. It lake could be anything. Tonka. Yeah, Mini Tonka, and he had a boat on there. There was a Viking boat, and he took me around, and I think. That was the most fascinating day I ever spent before a game was that lake is great, and there's great boating out there. I assume you have yeah, a big a couple, mansion a couple on, of things that. on that lake. Uh, one, we, we don't generally bring up that lake in Vikings yeah. anymore because of the <laughs> in this lake uh, for, the, for the love boat, yeah. um, which, uh, which kind of set us back a little bit in 05. But secondly, if you really want to appreciate Lake Minnetonka, Rent Purple Rain, a 1984 movie with uh, Prince, and all. Uh, the only word I will use is Apollonia. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Paul, uh, you, you mentioned Purple Kool-Aid. Uh, there are a lot of people who believe Minnesota not only will make the playoffs, but they're kind of the uh, flavor of the month for a lot of people when it comes to being a Super Bowl contender. Are you drinking that Kool-Aid? You know, I can't, I can't stretch it to Super Bowl contender. I, I just have too much respect for the Green Bay Packers and the Seattle Seahawks at this stage of the equation. Uh, but in winning seven games last year with the distraction that was Adrian Peterson off the field and losing him on the field, and then having to raise a rookie quarterback for the, for the final 12 games of the season, you know, with a new head coach, a new offensive coordinator, granted he's immortality, he's North Turner, but the, the system still was new. You know, to see the team win seven last year and then to have seen what I've seen this offseason, I can understand why why the wise guys are on us into the 2015. That, that is going to be such a difficult, I think, division. When you talk about yeah. the Packers to begin with, we think here in Denver, at least I do, I'll, I'll express the sentiment that John Fox and Adam Gase are going to do a job with the Chicago Bears and that Detroit Lions are you know, a team to be reckoned with. They're an offensive uh, threat. And, and the Vikings. I mean, this is going back to the old days of that division being solid from top to bottom, I think. Is that would that it, it's it's a little it's a little black and bluish, Woody. I mean, you know, the the Lions losing and Dominic and Sue and Nick Fairley in free agency is not gonna help, especially when they play us with Adrian Peterson. Um, you know, I think one of the key moves Green Bay made was Mike McCarthy giving up the play calling duties so that he could put a better focus on defense and special teams. I have a really high level of respect for, for Mr. McCarthy, and I think he's going to help a defense that, quite honestly, is not requisite of a defense that would win a Super Bowl, and I think people saw that in the NFC title game. Um, I truly believe that, that we're better than the Lions. I know we're better than the Bears. Uh, we haven't beaten Green Bay in several years, but uh, hopefully that changes this year. Paul, they have surrounded Teddy Bridgewater, the uh, second-year quarterback, with a lot of talent. you got Adrian Peterson, Mike Wallace, Cordero Patterson. Um, I, I'm wondering, I, I'm still, I, and I watch quarterbacks very, very closely, I, I'm still wondering how good Teddy Bridgewater can be. What's your take on that? I, I think it's a very fair way to look at it. You know, if, if you are immersed within the covenant like we are, and you're able to look at Coach's film and see what he did the final four to six games of the season, you'd go a little more over the top than you are now. Um, we, we had absolutely no home run hitting ability in our running game last year. I mean, we had a guy who had nine touchdowns, and we had a, a third-round rookie from Georgia Southern who, who nearly averaged five yards per carry in Jarek McKinnon. You know, those guys were serviceable, 
but the guy we have back there now, seriously, is a home run hitter. And the play action has so much more merit than it did last year. And he's going to change things so much for Bridgewater, where off what Teddy did last year and what I think he's going to do this year, I could argue that he should have been the first round, uh, the first overall pick in the 2014 draft. And if he had come out in 2015, everybody I talked to would have taken him over Jameis Winston and Marcus Mariota. So, the, uh, the team feels really good good about him. This is Norm Turner's final job, and so that means Kenny Bridgewater is the final quarterback this super well-respected coordinator is going to raise. He pumps everything he has into him, and we, we saw a difference at the, end of the, uh, at the end of last year. You guys are not old enough to remember it, but I go back to when the Vikings were playing in Metropolitan Stadium. I love that stadium for multi-purposes. I thought the Hump Dome was the worst place to play in the whole world, uh, except I loved the World Series when it was there. Tell us, give us an update on on the new stadium, and uh, I assume people are thrilled to death that after all these years, you're finally going to be in a position a year from now to, to move into the new place. Well, they're probably super excited until they get that PSL, uh, that, that PSL bill. <laughs> uh, but uh, other than that, it's about halfway done. It's magnificent. And the thing that I think makes it unique and, and really is going to make it stick out is that the team did not have a big footprint on which to build what is now called U.S. Bank Stadium. And uh, because of that, the, uh, the sight lines are extremely good. There's not a bad seat in the place. And if you, if you get a seat anywhere in the first 20 rows behind either the Vikings or the adversarial bench, then you're going to be right on top of those guys, kind of like a college football atmosphere. Our guest is uh, Paul Allen. He's the radio play-by-play -play announcer for the Minnesota Vikings, and that segment sponsored by the Celtic Tavern. Tell you more about them in just a second. We look forward to seeing you this year. Uh, I want to wait. I wanted to ask him about the well, defense I know, first. But I'm just right? saying I would look forward to seeing him. Okay. And I hope that uh, we can get together when, when the Vikings and the Broncos play because it's, it's not often that these two teams uh, get to play each other. I was trying to think the last time. Well, yeah, that, uh, Tim Tebow was, was hooking up with the Broncos receivers and Percy Harvin was having an unbelievable afternoon against the Broncos. Oh, thank you for reminding Isn't me. Isn't that I, the one, Paul? Remember. Wasn't that the last time the two teams played? Well, I remember that. Um, Tebow stiff-armed one of our cornerbacks, <laughs> I think, buried him in the Metrodome turf in Jimmy Hoffa-like fashion. The last time we were in one of my favorite cities, Denver, was the final game of the 2007 season. Oh. And it was one of those stupid uh, games where you had to sweat a Cowboys Redskins game, hoping the right team won, so maybe we had a two percent chance to get into the playoffs. And once we were once we officially were eliminated, it just the most pristine, beautiful snow began to fall in the uh, in the fourth quarter of the game. I think it was a non playoff year for the Jay Cutler led Denver Broncos. And in that game we had a first round receiver who was one of the worst draft picks in the history of Vikings football named Troy Williamson put a double move on Champ Bailey. That was a thing of beauty. He was 30 yards open. The quarterback hit him right between the numbers. If it had been a spear, he'd be dead. And he dropped. <laughs> yeah. I also remember that uh, your your team that you hang out with uh, had the ball uh, for, to start the overtime, if I remember correctly, and fumbled on its own three-yard line. And Mike Shanahan didn't waste any time. Kick field goal. Got the hell out of there, if I remember. Yeah, correctly. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's what happens in non-playoff-like seasons. <laughs> hey, Paul, last thing. Uh, you've got a head coach in Minnesota uh, who is a former defensive coordinator and a really good one. I look up and down the roster of the Minnesota Vikings on defense, and I see, I, I see that not one guy made the Pro Bowl. I hardly recognize any of those names. Is this going to be a strength because of Mike Zimmer, or is it going to be a weakness because there are no big names on the defensive side of the ball for Minnesota? Well, it already is a strength. In 2013, our defense statistically was the worst in the history of Minnesota Vikings football. And quite honestly, in the final two minutes of like five or six games, it was flat embarrassing with the way it handled things. Uh, then Zimmer comes in. We jumped up big time. I mean, we were top ten in points allowed last year or, or top 12, something like that. Our pass defense jumped up big time. Uh, we have a couple of players on our defense who, you granted, are not household names, but third-year cornerback Xavier Rhodes is the best cornerback in the NFC North, and he'll be one of the best shutdown corners in the NFL hmm. probably beginning this year. His name's Xavier Rhodes. And we have a safety from Notre Dame uh, heading into his fourth year named Harrison Smith. Uh, he had five interceptions last year. And he is going to probably become the highest paid safety in the NFL within the next two years. He, he's the bona fide defensive leader. He's an absolute 
God. But the thing is, he, he came into the league when we weren't doing too well, so not many people know about him. Paul, we appreciate the time. It's, it's been fun talking with you, and we will look forward to seeing you during the course of the season. And uh, Hopefully and, we can have you on before the game. And I hope it's an enjoyable year for the Vikings and for you. Thanks, Paul. I'll take one of those Shanahan's gift certificates, if you don't mind, <laughs> and the proverbial chalkboard sure. above my right shoulder right. now says, hashtag Godspeed. <laughs> <laughs> Give your address to best. our producer before you hang up. We'll get you that gift certificate. Yeah. Not really. See you don't later. tell him. <laughs> yeah. Not really. Yeah. All right. And the Elway, too, while you're at it. <laughs> Paul Allen, play-by-play play announcer for the Vikes. Yeah. And that, uh, yeah. seg- that segment brought to you by the Celtic Tavern. They're the official sponsor of the Colorado Rapids you know, soccer you team. You know, I've enjoyed uh, – I'm sorry – Go ahead. I uh, just the, enjoy the, the, talking the, to play-by-play guys. Oh, they're good. We talk to a bunch of them. They know how to them. talk. Yeah, they, yeah. they know their team. The Celtic provides a bus to every Colorado Rapids home game. Not a lot of time left in the season. So go over to the Celtic, get on the bus, go to the Rapids game, Gus. and tailgate for two hours before the kickoff. If you want to know where the Celtic is, tailgate I'll tell you. Two blocks west of Coors Field on Blake.